Don in London, hello again for uh, April 20th, 2009, uh, Monday morning, time just coming up to 8.40, so I've just done one little video, and I ran out of time, I was so wrapped up in trying to share a message of experience, strength and hope, that I didn't follow the clock, and as you will know if you've been following my videos, I usually use daily reflections of the AA program, that's the fellowship program of Alcoholics Anonymous, for whom I don't speak, I speak for myself here, and my experience, strength and hope, and as Bill sees it. So I'm a great fan of AA, and uh, in the early days I was put off AA, simply because I was full of, I was full of it, let's put it that way, and I was a very human human, suffering from addiction to both substance and behaviours, my substance was alcohol, my behaviours were erratic, and I, always trying to be perfect, working as hard as I might as anything to try and get some self-esteem, but it never seemed to work. And life was hard and difficult, and I never realized that for many years I was uh, suffering from depression. So I was using the most available uh, legal drug to obliviate, and I know there's no such words, but to find oblivion, obliviated, I like that word, I've made it up. And these days I have a bit more of a sense of humour, as you can possibly tell. You can probably tell from my eyes I'm not too well either, I'm just getting over a cold. So being a fan of AA doesn't, doesn't preclude uh, upsets and mishaps around living. So we still get, get all that life can offer us. And uh, as life offered me more time to live, uh, with a little bit of help from fellowship, family, community, society, and many, many medical professionals who must have been at their wit's end, or could be if they didn't realize just what addiction is and how it affects a human being. That is, it takes away all self-will, uh, self-esteem, you name it. All we, all we end up with is fear, oblivion, isolated and wishing we might not wake up the next day or whenever because we just cannot get out of this trap. So AA helped me and I share the preamble on every video simply so it slows me down and focuses me into this one day only. So it's all about today. So when I, here we go, the AA preamble said six or seven hundred times a week in meetings in London, UK. Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. The only requirement for membership is a, is a desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership, we are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution, does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. And the reason for the anonymous, for my, for my understanding, an anonymity provides sanctuary for a person to find their truth. And uh, many people say the fellowship of AA is all about a spiritual, a spiritual way of developing our lives. And as most people understand, spiritual is uh, understanding the truth of now. So as one archbishop said, what is spiritual when asked? He said it's the ability to cope with life. And uh, the closer to reality, without denials and without filters, the better our spiritual condition will be. And that is to see the world as it is as it was intended by nature and providence and not through the bottom of a glass or through a drug or through some sort of behavior which blocks us from the light of living and uh, I'm taking a deep breath because it's really important to me uh, spiritual is truth anonymity is sanctuary and you know what that's been the way it has been for many thousands of years in many t different types of organization and community and society. Civilization is, is founded on truth in the main and not denials, but uh, as the centuries have gone on we all seem to be very good at doing denial, putting on a brave face and uh, covering our, our fears up when in fact it's better to have them and do something about them. And it took me a long time to get there, 35 years of drinking and uh, taking the edge off and thinking I was having fun. I was some of the time, you know, there were some good times drinking but um, on balance it got me in the end and uh, I, I really had to start from scratch to start a new life all over again and that's very hard to do it's about letting go and letting life happen as it is we all have consequences 
and uh, you know, as we get older we get other things wrong with us so I've got a shed load of things to worry about if I was worried these days it's better just to manage what I can make the right choices and get on uh, AA, daily reflections, daily page and uh, it's April the fourth step of the 12 step program all about doing a fearless moral inventory and it says here for April 20th self-examination we ask God to direct our thinking especially asking that it, it it be divorced from self-pity, dishonest or self-seeking motives and you know uh, our understanding of God is your understanding, your unique authentic take on it uh, some days I might not feel like believing in God some days I think I'm an atheist, some days I think I'm an agnostic some days I think I believe in God oh, it's what I feel is right and you know nature and providence we are all part of it and it's bigger than us so that will do as a higher power for me and truth works if we know what nature and providence is without these filters so I'll go on to the reading what I'm trying to do is help people see that you know a new life is accessible and however we get there whether it's AA fellowship or another fellowship or just getting medical support and having great support from family and society however it works is, is absolutely the best way as long as we get out of the problem into the solution so step four is part of that self-examination when said sincerely this prayer teaches me to be truly unselfish and humble for even in doing good deeds I often ask to seek approval and glory for myself by examining my motives in all that I do I can be of service to God and, and to others helping them do what they want to do when I put God in charge of my thinking much needless worry is eliminated and I believe he guides me throughout the day when I eliminate thoughts of self-pity, dishonesty and self-centeredness as soon as they enter my mind I find peace with God, my neighbour and myself and for me God is truth so you know, it may be a bit abstract to say that I don't know, I don't know what the entity is it's, I think it's the universe or I feel it is and that we're all connected to it and that's all for the good in As Bill Sees It, uh, another reading book, you can take, do as many pages a day if it helps you keep sober. So, page 81, it says selfish, question mark. I can see why you were disturbed to hear some AA speakers say, AA is a selfish program. The word selfish ordinarily implies that one is acquisitive, demanding and thoughtless of the welfare of others. Of course, the AA way of life does not, does not at all imply such undesirable traits. So, what do these speakers mean? Well any theologian will tell you that the salvation of his own soul is the highest vocation that a man can have without salvation however we may, def how without salvation, however, we may define this he will li have little or nothing for as AA there is even more urgency if we cannot or will not achieve sobriety then we become truly lost right in the here and now the here and now we are of no value to anyone including ourselves until we find salvation from alcohol therefore our own recovery and spiritual growth have to come first a right and necessary kind of self-concern and you know the, the absolute truth is if we, if we are caught in the malady of drink we cannot, we cannot function as human beings with this emotional, spiritual and physical we are, the consequences are we shut down, we isolate, we exclude ourselves and we wish not to be here often or we're driven by a thousand forms of fear which means we can't open the door to life so as uh, you know it was a gradual process with me and I had many many occasions when I thought you know death would be preferable and I can remember uh, a Roman Catholic priest turning up at two in the morning when I was on my deathbed uh, being revived once more and uh, I asked him why he'd come and he said to, to perform extreme, extreme unction I said what the last rites he said yes I said, I'm not a Catholic, and he said, don't be so fussy. And, you know, I can laugh at it, but, you know, I was in a dreadful state. And the, I suppose, the false bravado, the ego, the fear, the fear of actually accepting I needed help. That was the hardest thing. I needed help to get back to ordinary living, to find the truth of now, this spiritual connection. And anonymity provided me with a sanctuary to get through my fears. So the fellowship of AA has helped me immensely, one day at a time, and long may it be so. So when I say God grant me the serenity, truth grant me the serenity, to accept the things I cannot change.
courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference and with a lot of help from a lot of people just make one day go by and work as it may.